Greetings to all of you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We're in the midst of Holy Week, and today we celebrate what is known as Monday Thursday. It is part of the Easter Trigium that begins on Monday Thursday and ends Easter evening. It celebrates the passion, crucifixion, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. The word Monday comes from the Latin mandatum, or commandment, and it is from Scripture where Jesus says in the 13th chapter of John's Gospel, verse 34, A new commandment I give to you, to love one another as I have loved you. This comes after Jesus has washed the disciples' feet. And although the concept is in Deuteronomy, to love God, and in Leviticus, to love one's neighbor as oneself, it is unique in the practical and sacrificial demonstration of love and the fact that it comes through the new covenant by the transforming power of the Holy Spirit. We have two events highlighted for us today, namely the washing of the disciples' feet and the Last Supper. Let us turn to our lectionary reading from John's Gospel, the 13th chapter, verses 1 to 15. Now before the feast of Passover, Jesus, knowing that his hour had come, that he would depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper, the devil, having already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come forth from God and was going back to God, got up from the supper and laid aside his garments, and taking a towel, he girded himself. Then he poured water into the basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel with which he was girded. And he came to Simon Peter, and he said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? And Jesus answered and said to him, What I do you do not realize now, but you will understand hereafter. And Peter said to him, Never shall you wash my feet. And Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no part with me. And Simon Peter said to him, Lord, then watch not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, He who is bathed needs only to wash his feet, but it is completely clean. And you are clean, but not all of you. For he knew the one who was betraying him. And for this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. And when he washed their feet and had taken his garments and reclined at the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, the Lord and the teacher, washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I gave you an example that also do as I did to you. Now I want to highlight a couple of things for you. In these final chapters, Jesus is dedicating himself to his disciples. He is narrowing his focus, if you like. The result of this is greater preparation for them that will bear fruit. And there are times in our lives where we need to narrow our focus for greater impact and clarity. And I hope you're doing that during our current circumstances. Jesus is going back to the Father, verse 3. And this knowledge and knowledge of his mission helped him endure the betrayal, agony, and suffering he was to bear on the cross. Our ultimate trajectory is to be with Christ. And as Christians, we can rest in that certainty. We're called to serve as an act of love. The disciples had been earlier arguing about who was the greatest among them. And here Jesus stoops to what was considered a menial and degrading task, that of washing feet. And I would imagine today we would also consider that a menial task. His disciples were embarrassed, and Peter, being Peter, speaks up, beside himself that Jesus would do that. And Jesus says, if I do not wash you, you have no part with me. And Peter replies, Lord, then wash not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. The symbolic meaning is clear. 
that unless the Lamb of God cleanses us from sin, we can have no part in him. And finally, if we acknowledge Jesus as Lord and note his own humble attitude and application of service, we should be following his example in our interactions with others. We're called to share the gospel, to love and serve others, and to live out our genuine faith. And now, until we meet again, may the Lord bless and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.